service of Midnight Mass. It is wonderful to greet you here, whether you are in church in person or whether you are live streaming through Facebook. It is good to be here to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Reverend Anne and I am the vicar here. This is Diane Scott, our lay reader. We will be leading your service for you this evening. It is good to be here. In church, you have orders of service on your uh, chairs. If you're online, you can find the service on a church near you, on either the St. Anne or the St. Christopher page, on the news and events page. So please do go there in order to access the words. So let us pause and just draw ourselves into God's presence on this holy night. So I invite you to turn to your order of service. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? No. Now the word is made flesh and laid in a narrow manger. From eternity to eternity, you are God. And now we see you as a newborn child. The Lord said to me, you are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. And so we're going to light our Advent wreath. Throughout Advent, we have been preparing for the coming of Jesus, the light of the world. God, our Father, Tonight, the Saviour is born, and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the light who has come into the world. So we say together, Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. And so we listen to our Advent wreath song. It is the chorus of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel has been recorded for us by Annette and Jennifer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Dear friends, as we meet to celebrate the birth of Christ, let us pray that God will bless this crib, that all who worship his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, may come to share in his life in glory. God, our Father, on this night, your Son, Jesus Christ, was born of the Virgin Mary 
for ours and for our salvation. Bless this crib, which we have prepared to celebrate that holy birth, that all who see it may be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who is alive and reigns forever. Amen. I'm going to move the camera now over to the lectern and we will continue the service from there. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to listen now to the Gloria in Excelsis, sung for us by the choir of St. Martin in the Fields.
Let us pray in the peace of this Christmas celebration that our joy in the birth of Christ will last forever. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God's word is a lantern to our feet and a light to our path. Our first reading from Holy Scripture this evening is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds, and his servants flames of fire. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is for ever and ever, and the righteous scepter, scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up. And like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please do stand as the Gospel of the Lord is proclaimed. Today Christ is born. Alleluia. Alleluia. Today the Saviour has come. Alleluia. Today the angels sing on earth. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the word, world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. Tonight we have gathered to celebrate, to remember that 2,000 years ago God took the step to change our lives, our world. He stepped down from heaven and entered into the earthly domain. God came to live among us his fallen creation. Both of our readings speak of the word of God, of Jesus being God from the very beginning, before the world began, before the world was formed, and certainly before coronavirus. Tonight, on this, the Christmas of 2020, we gather to remember the events of over two millennia ago, we gather at the end of a year like one that none of us can remember before. A year of lockdown upon lockdown, a year of hardship for many, and for others, a year of recognizing God's blessings in their lives. A year when Christmas celebrations look very different from what we may have wanted. And yet a year when many know themselves to have been blessed by God. A year ago, we would not have been live streaming this service. We hadn't received the gift of Zoom. Within and throughout this pandemic, there has been much grief, but there has also been much joy. Remember hearing the bird song and stopping slowing down and observing God's amazing creation, having time to sit and to read, to be in the garden. And then, of course, there were those little jobs that needed to be completed. Almost 11 months after first hearing about the beginnings of this virus emerging in Wuhan, we arrive at this Christmas night with vaccines being developed and being begun to be administered. Tonight, we remember the incarnation, the birth of Jesus, the birth of Jesus that was and continues to be a momentous event. That we still celebrate and remember the birth of Jesus shows us the reason for Christmas being so important to us. It reveals God's love for his people, 
giving us hope that we might know and show his love. In Jesus' birth, we know the love of God for us, his people. Emmanuel, God with us, arrived into a stunned world. He shook the world out of its old normal. Alfred Delp, a German Jesuit priest and philosopher who was part of the German resistance, knew how hard it can be to celebrate Christmas when, celebrate, when separated from family and friends as he was imprisoned for his resistance to the Nazi party. As he languished in prison in the Christmas of 1942, he reflected that Christian holy days are not primarily about external holiday celebrations, but that particular mysteries of God happen to us and that we respond. And he also said that from this holy night onward, the world had the possibility of living in nearness to God or in living apart from God. Reflections that even though they came from a different time and a different situation, I think are still relevant to us today, just as they were when Alfred Delp penned them. So let us pause and think. On this holy night, we are gathered to celebrate the beginning of the Christmas season, and we have a choice to make. We can recognize the nearness of God, or we can live our lives without being in relationship with God. In the moment of Jesus' birth, everything changed. And we are invited to join in with the change God made as he came to earth to live among us. And I hope that as you have chosen to gather here tonight, either in person or online, that you want to live your lives in the nearness of God. God, in coming to live among us, gives us hope. Hope is an aspiration, a desire, a longing, an expectation. God came as a baby in the hope that his message would be heard, that God loves us, that we are loved by God. This Christmas, as we celebrate that Christ is born, that God is with us, the message of love and hope that is in and of God is available to us all. And as we remember to look for the importance of Christmas, we remember that it is because God came to be with us, among us, that we celebrate today. Many of us this Christmas are approaching the Christ child, the child in the manger, with a sadness in our hearts. Sadness for ourselves, sadness because this Christmas time we're not able to be with family and friends. Sadness maybe because someone we love has died sadness because we will be alone and so we acknowledge our pain before God and in the honesty of our pain we're then able to hear of the love for us in the Messiah's birth we see the delight in Mary and Joseph that this child God's son has been safely delivered we see too the challenges they faced in getting to Bethlehem, in finding a roof to cover their heads, in delivering unaided with no medical staff on hand to help, the infant Jesus Christ. God was with and in 
the birth of Jesus. So too, God is with us in all that challenges us. Jesus is God's word who brought to us good news. Good news that brings us to know the love and the mercy of God in the birth of his son. We see an expression of that love for us. In the teachings of Jesus, we learn more and more of Jesus' care for God's people. Christmas is the season that starts tonight and continues until the 2nd of February. It is the season where we are reminded again and again that Christmas is about sharing the love of God. This Christmas time, God is inviting each of us to allow Jesus to be reborn in our hearts, to make space in our heart and in our lives for Jesus to thrive. For to do so is to grow in holiness, in the knowledge and love of God. And as we individually grow to know the Lord Jesus, so we will grow as God's people. May our lives be transformed by the hope given us this Christmas night that each person gathered here, either in person or online, knows themselves to be loved and cherished by God. Amen. I invite you to stand now as we say the creed together, declaring our faith in God in a call and response version. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers of intercession. There is a response for this evening's prayers. So after each section, when I say, Holy God, we'll say together, hear our prayer. Holy God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, in this holy night, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. 
Renew your church as the body of Christ. We thank you for your continued presence among us during this difficult COVID year. We thank you for the technology that has enabled us to worship together even when we are apart. Help us as a church to be open to change as we face the challenges that lie ahead, knowing that you are always with us. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, there was no room for your son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. We pray for the thousands of families in our nation facing Christmas in unsuitable temporary accommodation. We pray for those behind with the rent and anxious about losing their homes in the new year. Help us to make room in our hearts for them as we support our local Christian charities. Azalea, Luton Food Bank. There for those in the greatest need. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labour, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand all who are in pain or distress. Those who have contracted COVID-19, those being treated in hospital at this moment, and those who have other health needs. We name before you now those for whom we have been asked to pray as a parish. Mark, Byron, Audrey, Jenny, Ian, Pete, Jan, Grace, Diana, Gibson, John, Iris, Colin. For their comfort and healing, Holy God, hear yeah. our prayer. In this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to the lonely, the anxious, the depressed, to all who suffer in the sadness of our world. We pray that those who are distressed at being unable to spend time this Christmas with friends and family may discover new hope in the message of the Nativity. Holy God, Hear our prayer. In this holy night, the angels sang, Peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in all the world. We pray for those places where conflict never seems to end. For Afghanistan, Syria, Mexico, Turkey, Somalia, Iraq, Libya, and so many other places. We pray for lasting reconciliation in our nations, our neighbourhoods, our homes, our hearts. Holy God, yeah. hear our prayer. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption by sharing the good news of your action in our lives, in all we say and do. Holy God, yeah. hear our prayer. In this holy night, strangers found the Holy Family and saw the baby lying in the manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. Holy God, yeah. hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven is come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand, Derek Slough, Grace Girdlestone, Reverend Bill Shin, Ronnie Rose, Joseph Hyde, Crystal Cowdray, and all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Holy God, Hear our prayer. In this holy night, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. Open all our hearts 
that he may be born in us today. Holy God, hear hear our prayer. Father, in this holy night, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary, Joseph and the saints, through him who is your word made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come to the time in our service where we will share in God's peace. So I invite you to stand. This holy night the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us gesture make a note on Facebook to one another to share in the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Please do be seated and in a moment I will start our offertory hymn going Joy to the World. It's a shame you can't join in the sing, but do enjoy hearing those words. Please do stand for our Eucharistic prayer. Word made flesh, life of the world. In your incarnation, you embraced our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. O oh, glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself and on this night was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit and lived as one of us by this mystery of the Word made flesh. You have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we listen as the choir of St. Martin in the fields proclaim the glory of your name, and sing our joyful hymn of praise. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you, he broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Our Lady, Saint Anne, Saint Christopher and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
so rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life. That life is the light of the world. God, hear among us. Light in the midst of us. Bring, bring us to, to light and life. And so we listen as the Agnes Day is sung. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. I invite you now to be seated as we prepare to distribute the Blessed Sacrament. If you have brought with you hand gel, please do sanitise your hands. If not, Diane will be coming among you with the hand gel. If you would like to receive the body of Christ, the bread, please place your hands out flat in front and I will bring it to you. If you would prefer a prayer of blessing, please put your hands in a prayer shape. If you would prefer me not to come to you at all, please put your hands across your chest. body of Christ. The blood of Christ. If anybody needs a gluten-free wafer, please let me know as I come to you. <laughs> 